let's check out The Watcher. So we got my favorites, Bobby Carnavale and Naomi Watts, and they're going out to buy a house in the beautiful suburbs. Yes, this is giving, honey. This is where I want to live. I'm ready for the burbs. I've lived in cities for damn near 20 years. Give me a burb. Oh, this house is massive. I don't care who's watching me in here. I'd spread my cheeks in the window every day to live in this joker. So they walking up to the house and the little kid sees some man watching him out the window and he stops like it's odd. And it is. So as they look around the house, there's an old man moaning by the dumb waiter and some woman's trying to coax him on home. So we've got this guy who's giving a whole door tea and a lady who's giving a old Pearl tea from the movie Pearl. If you know, you know. Bobby Cannavale look at his daughter like, oh, this is odd. And they all in the kitchen in the house. She's the president of the local Preserveve Society and she says the dumbwaiter is a national treasure. Over in the dining room, Nora is signing in and she sees the real estate agent who she recognizes. Karen, I think we should make dumb waiters a thing again. However, so the father and the son playing with the dumb waiter, while Nora and Karen catch up, we find out she does art. Now we got another creepy old guy asking Karen and Nora, did indentured servants build this house? And Karen, the real estate agent, she's like, I how would I know? You know, Heffa. You know. But then they go outside to look at the pool, which of course I would be interested in, and they got some Wednesday Adams looking heifer just standing off in the bushes. Bobby comes outside and sees the neighbors. They lying out on lawn chairs facing their property, and they look real odd and frumpy for this kind of neighborhood. They look po. So they put in an offer, but apparently they don't qualify for the loan with their current income. Poor Whiter. Oh, so he said, well, let's do a big down payment. All our savings, all our stocks, cash in IRA. Dummy. Let's really get tied up in this nightmare. So they get the house and move in. So now the neighbors are saying we've got a problem here as they see the piano get rolled in. So if y'all were just financially responsible, wouldn't none of this shit have happened? All right. All right. So the parents get to hump and christen in the house. Meanwhile, with the daughter, she's putting on her lipstick in her private bathroom. But then she hears some organy churchy music and heads out in the hallway to see what it is. She follows the sound downstairs. Oh, wait, no, she heading up. Oh, hell, now she gonna interrupt her parents. Oh, Lord, I'm glad I don't have children. You finally getting it in and they gonna bother you? So she tells them I heard music in the attic. But her parents get on her about the lipstick. So the next morning the dad gets up at 5 a.m. Uh-oh, and the door just creaks open as he's making coffee in this fabulous yet dark kitchen. The kitchen's very masculine. Oh, and it's... um. That guy that was looking in the dumbwaiter, he brought in the paper. This is very, um, murder house. And with the paper comes the first letter from the watcher. So the letter a little creepy talking about why you finish in the basement. It was left unfinished. But they got to get the kids off to school. Oh, Lord, the letter talking about I'm going to learn your kids' names and draw them to me. So they head to the Popo in a Prius. So the police is like, look, this is the safest town in America. We've had a few disappearances, but no violent crime. Tila and I says disappearances, yes. Lifetime movie disappearances. Snapped disappearances. Call is coming from inside the house shit. So the popo said it might be your neighbor Jasper Winslow. Whatever happened to Judy Winslow? Oh, the popo said we know how deep you had to dig to afford that place. How he know you, Po? T said the same thing I did. I'll tell you how he know. Because they'll put your business in the street. In the street. Uh, so they get back to the house and their neighbors, the ones that look Po, that are watching them from the other house, 
they have crossed the property line and are taking flowers. They introduce themselves as Mitch and Maureen. Bobby Cannavale is like, why y'all on my property? I don't know you heifer. So they say, oh, we're just harvesting the arugula. He said, well, why don't you harvest the arugula on your side of the fence? She said, it migrated over here because of the sun. Child, Mitch stabbed his little knife down that he was eating the apple with like he gonna do something. And Maureen getting a real attitude. Lord, this is an ominous, odd couple. So Teela and I go to lunch with the real estate agent and she tell her, oh, you need to get a real car because we don't do Priuses out here. You're too frumpy with it. Well, now Teela and I open it up to the real estate agent saying they broke as hell and marriage is hard. So then they go for a little walk and she tells the real estate agent about the letter and asks her who outbid us for this house because it might be them. And she says, I'll let you know. I don't think you will because I don't think anybody else bid on that house. I think you lied to make a sale. Lord, they done got the son a dumb waiter and now he gonna play with the, with the ferret. So we know this going in poorly. Ooh, but he hears somebody walking in the other room and sees a glimpse of somebody moving. Oh my God, it was the uh, the guy that was obsessed with the dumbwaiter was in the dumbwaiter. Child, Bobby Carnavale threw him out the house real quick. Oh goodness, the last owners let him do that. This is so freaking murder house. What in the Ryan Murphy plot line bullshit? So he said, look, Jasper, if you come in my house again, I'm going to fuck you up. Now the sister gets mad for threatening him. Who cares what the previous owners were fine with for the last 60 years? Jasper loved playing in that dumbwaiter. Did he need dumbwaiter money? The word neighbor just doesn't mean what it used to. Oh, God. So he says, I might remodel and get rid of the dumbwaiter. And she said, oh. You're going to get rid of the dumbwaiter. What are you going to do? Take out the trees too? He said, I just might. Well, that's a sawtooth oak. That's a part of this community more than you'll ever be, yuppie. Trees have memories. And they can talk to each other through their roots. Well, child, they ain't saying much then. But you're saying even less. This is shitty boo. It's moving fast enough, but it's shitty boo. Shitty boo. So now they'd made enemies out of both neighbors. But as Tila and I is getting to her pottery, the doorbell rings. It was the security system and he gonna set them up with the deluxe package for seven grand. So it's nighttime and the only thing running around the house was the ferret, but we see somebody done grabbed it. It was probably the pappy. Oh shit, somebody done killed it. Oh, Lord. So they didn't call the popo for a murdered ferret. And now we see both sets of neighbors that hate them and the security company driving up. However, the popo can't do anything. And they're like, well, did the ferret kill itself? Well, dead ferrets tell no tales. What about a ferret autopsy? Was it blunt ferret trauma? So that night, the little boy asks his dad if he can keep them safe, and he teaches the little boy how to use the alarm. However, the next morning, the girl playing the piano, which irritates the neighbors, Mitch and Maureen. I don't even know how they can hear it. However, we see in the security install guys becoming infatuated with the daughter. And later that night, the real estate agent drives by the house. The next morning, T calls her and asks her about the other bids. She ain't answered, so she leaves a voicemail. Lord, but the next morning they get another letter from the watcher. He knows their names. And the names of they chitlins. And he's looking around. Who? Who? So T come home and see her husband freaking out. And that was the shit. Oh, it's directed by Rai Rai. Oh. Okay, so this is Murder House Without the Murder. Well, I'm going to see you soon for episode two.